Welcome to this demonstration of how to work with vApps in the vCloud Director Tenant Portal. A vApp is a collection of one or more virtual machines that can be deployed within the organization virtual data center of the tenant. The vApp itself can be used for running workloads, is stored in a specific storage policy, and can be connected to all kinds of networks within the service provider's environment. In the following demo, we will show you how a vApp can be created. Within the vCloud Director Tenant Portal, an organization administrator or any other user of the organization with the correct privileges can create new vApps within the environment. After logging in to the Tenant Portal, we need to navigate to the virtual data center where the vApp should be deployed to. Within the vApp section, you have two options to create a new vApp. Create a vApp from scratch or add a vApp from an existing OVF file that is stored on the local computer. To use an uploaded OVF or OVA file, it is important to first navigate to the destination where the vApp should be located. Browse for the file, click Next and verify the OVF template details. Provide a name for the vApp and select which storage policies should be used. Click Next to also configure the networks the vApp should be connected to and if the hardware should be customized or not. Click Finish to start the process. To create a vApp from scratch, click New vApp on the vApps page. Provide a name for the vApp and click Add Virtual Machine. The virtual machines can also be either created from scratch or imported from a template that is located in a catalog of the virtual data center or in a shared catalog. Click OK and create to deploy the vApp. Within the vCloud Director Tenant Portal, typical day one and day two operational tasks around a vApp can be fulfilled by an organization admin or a user with the proper permissions. Example of those operational tasks are start, stop, resetting a vApp, opening a vApp, access the console of its virtual machines, changing the ownership of the vApp, edit the properties of the vApp, like network connectivity or virtual hardware settings, or work with snapshots of a vApp. In this demonstration, of a day one and day two operation, we use the webshop vApp that has been imported from a catalog of the service provider. Before we start the vApp, we need to make sure it is connected to a network within the service provider's organization environment. Open the context menu and select Add Network. For a vApp, you typically have two options. Add the vApp to an org VDC network or add it to a vApp network that is specifically available only for this vApp. For this demonstration, we will be connecting directly to the organization VDC. After the vApp is now connected to the network, we can also change the ownership of the vApp to make sure that a specific person or organization is responsible to maintain and operate the VM. This can be any user that is integrated within the vCloud Director organization based on LDAP or any other SAML-based authentication method. Before we start the VM or before we make any changes within the vApp or to the virtual machine's data, we want to make sure that we create a snapshot of the current state. When you click the vApp, you gain access to all of the relevant information about the VMs that are part of it. You can verify the network they are connected to, the VMware tools of each VM, and the storage policy that has been applied. You can also change the default boot order of the virtual machines to make sure that if some services are dependent to each other, the VMs are started in the right order. An example could be that in our webshop vApp, the database server may have to be started before the web server starts. Next, let's adjust who can access this vApp. Instead of specific users, we let everyone in our organization access the vApp with read-only privileges. After verifying the network configuration, we are ready to power on the vApp with its workload VMs running within. 
click the context menu and select power on. The vApp is now going to start and the workload VMs will be booted up in the order we defined earlier. Once a vApp has been stopped, it can be permanently deleted within an organization VDC. You can, if your user account has the proper permissions, delete the vApp manually or, if release time has expired, the vApp can be shut down and deleted automatically. This lease time can be reviewed in the vApp section of the tenant portal. As we have mentioned before, we need to make sure that the vApp is stopped before we can delete it. Then, from the Actions menu, select Delete. This concludes our demonstration on how to work with vApps in the vCloud Director tenant portal. Thanks for watching.